Dab. Take a tote. That's what I'm going to do while I'm waiting to get Glenn in here. So, yeah, I guess today and um, there was a mass shooting at a um, at a parade, a 4th of July parade. Some jackass who appears to now be a, a QAnon weirdo um, shot a whole bunch of people. I think he injured five or seven and shot. So, like, close to 30 people were shot. Oh, I'm trying to get Glenn in here right now. So, um, give me a second. I'm still working on it. This is ridiculous, this um, setup here. So, hopefully he'll be in in a minute. We'll see what happens. I just invited him. It worked out. But yeah, it's tragic. These mass shootings keep happening over and over and over again. <laughs> I mean, this at this parade today, it was full of police. They had a police part of the parade, like where the police were going through the parade, hitting their sirens and marching by the car and all the people were cheering. There was cops everywhere today. And you know what? Not one of them, not one of them could stop this mass shooting. It looks like Glenn might be in here now. Maybe. There you are. Yeah, I was just hitting some weed talking to the, um, <laughs> talking to the people about the um, mass shooting today. That wasn't on the Highland, topics list. Highland Park, Illinois. Yeah. White, upper middle class suburb north of Chicago. Uh, I've seen a picture of the suspect. Wow. Yeah, there's a lot of them. He, 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 um, was it a Trump rally? He was waiting for Trump's plane. He's supposedly some kind of rapper that talks about shooting people up. And people are speculating he had a 47 on his own tattoo on his face and people are wondering how long he had that and if he was planning this like if it was July the 4th 7-4 or whatever I don't know I'm just reading things off Twitter well I mean in the American tradition immediately you know let's find something out about him that we can yell and people will believe it's true and then you know it's like number three is the question marks number four is profit so you know that's that's the idea here got to be a dime to be made never mind the real results six more people oh. dead um the thing that made me shake my head is I saw a little bit of some kind of press conference. So they think they know where he was, what roof he was on. And now it turns out that, well, there's some sort of business on the roof. So, you know, it's more important that with a parade going on, they'd be allowed to, you know, have the opportunity to make some revenue by being open Oh, just ridiculous. Yeah, I don't care if the business is open. I just, like, he went up on a roof and started shooting people. That's the problem. Like, I don't blame the business unless he was running it. No, the issue is, you know, there's all this bullshit about security, security. Well, you could close a roof that is usually open to the public. What's, you know, it's not that hard. Oh, no, this guy may, might make 30 bucks today. So that 30 bucks of income for him is more important than the risk management on this. Well, you lost that fucking bet. Yeah, I don't know. I don't think he planned for it. 
The thing was, though, there was cops everywhere, like I was just saying. Everywhere. Like, every this video is, I see, there's cops standing around in it. And you know what? This is exactly what I mean. You people are so concerned about security? Well, then close a the fucking roof for the day. Give the guy a hundred bucks. He'll probably stay closed all weekend. <laughs> yeah, it's you know? just... I'm just like, if they close the roof, he can just walk up and shoot people. He just doesn't have the vantage point without a roof. But I, I don't see the roof as a problem. I see that the thing is, the people need to realize police do not keep anyone safe. They stood by and let little kids get murdered. They might have murdered some of those little kids in Uvalde. Um, I mean, it, it, there's cops on every corner. There's cops in the parade. And this guy ha ha shoots. I mean, he was shooting for a quick minute. He, he probably reloaded once because it stopped and then he started shooting again and these cops didn't do anything. They didn't catch him. He got away. Well, I heard the video and I would agree if somebody was to suggest that that sounded like two combat magazines worth. That's what it sounded like to me. So, yeah, you know. that's what I figured. He reloaded. And then yeah. they said they found the rifle. So yeah, he just left the it. rifle. Yep. Yeah, that's that's. I don't know, man. We had we we're gonna talk about this a little later, but there was a whole bunch of Nazis marching through the streets in, in various cities, trying to attack protests and stuff, trying to attack gay people and women's rights activists. It's it's. Is getting to a really crazy point, but I mean, in this country, this is nothing new. It's been here before. It's just going back to what it was. People are like, well, this is the worst time in history. Yeah, come on now. They had like literal lynchings back in the day where these cats, same kind of people, would have a picnic and hang somebody, then chop up the body and take body parts as souvenirs. That's what white people used to do. That's how they used to spend their weekends, these these weirdo Southerners lynching somebody, taking their body parts as souvenirs because they didn't even see black people as humans. But yeah, I don't know the motive for this. He shot up a 4th of July parade with mainly white people. Maybe they didn't love Trump enough. Maybe they weren't QAnons or they didn't know the truth, quote unquote. I don't know what it was, but this dude was a real whack job just looking at what I've seen people posting from his social media. Oh, he's just an accelerationist. You know? I yeah. mean, people have to remember that Charles Manson, his grand strategy was he was going to do these murders to create a race war. So, you know, this shit has been around forever, but, you know, nothing ever changes. It just gets more lethal and more frequent and more accepted. Yeah. It's just, it's to the ridiculous point, man. Oh, yeah. It's to the, I mean, I saw it earlier. It said Highland Park. I thought it was out here because we have a Highland Park in California, not too far from LA. And then I was, I read it was in Illinois. But, um, yeah, when I first saw it, it said something like two people shot. So I was like, oh, it's probably not even a big deal. It's probably a, a dispute, a personal dispute or something. And then as the news kept coming in, more and more people shot. It was a parade going on and all this and that. And then I seen the videos. It was just, that's the thing, man. These cats just go and say, I'm going to kill a lot of people today, random people, people I might not like, like that asshole that went into the store in Buffalo targeting black people. Yep. They didn't have problems with these people. They didn't have any. They just want to go. It's terror. It's terrorism is what it is. Oh, yeah. And you just say, I'm going to go randomly just start shooting a bunch of people that I don't know and have no connection to. That's terrorism. For whatever reason you're doing it for. That's terrorism. Now, if you like, oh, I don't like these cats. I know they're going to be over here. or I have a problem with this dude or this happened or something. It's still screwed up, but it's a different thing. You're not saying, oh, I'm just going to go slaughter a bunch of innocent. You know, like, oh, I got a beef with this person. I'm going to go fight with this person, shoot at this person. That's not as terrifying. You know what I mean? 
that happens every day all over the place and it's tragic and it's sad and it needs to stop. But there's a huge difference between somebody that just, you know, I'm just going to go kill some random people today as many as I can. Uh, I think that's way out. I think what you're talking about is, you know, the stuff the way it used to be, the game within the game, you know? I mean, there was always people turn up dead, uh, people disappear, but, you know, it's most likely dealt with in their own uh, system, with their own rules, and that's where it stayed. And, you know, this has always been, whenever anybody wants to tell you how great the United States is, they always tell you about all this crazy shit that happens in places like Afghanistan, gee, I don't know why, or Iraq, gee, I don't know why, or Libya, or gee, I don't know why. But it's, yeah, it's, they, it's they, that they, extreme they, in these places. You know, and it, they just say that's that's fucking nuts. But now you look at what's happening multiple times a week now in the United States. It's the exact same thing. It's just like you're seeing something on the news from 10 years ago where it says somebody flipped out at a market in Baghdad and 10 or 15 people are dead. You know, and everybody shakes their head. Holy fuck, what's wrong over there? What's, and it probably was U.S. soldiers doing it. No, but the thing is, it's happening in your own backyard now. So, you know? Well, that always, it always has. The reason they bring up those places is because non-white people might doing the shoot, might be doing the shooting. That's why the first thing, when this happened, they started saying, see how Chicago is? Yep. Because they wanted to connect it to black people. Yep. And but the fact is, white supremacists in this country have always been a problem. They've always been murdering people, mass murdering when they can. This is nothing new. It's just we have, I mean, it's more often, you know, it happens more and more. And you have this social media and the press that just covers it like crazy. So then you get these other cats to be like, oh, I'm a loser. I could at least be famous and hopefully maybe locked up or just kill myself. You know, I don't know. It's a weird mentality. Like, look at this dude in New Zealand. This Nazi ran into a mall and started shooting people in stores. Yeah, and there has been but, but, and there has been one in Denmark of all places as well. Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's um it's a white supremacy problem. That's the way I see it. And it always has been. These people are sick and these people have always wanted to go injure and harm people. Whether they're under whatever band of Patriot Front, KKK, NSM, MAGA, QAnon, whatever it is, they're violent Nazis, they're white supremacists, they're Christian fascists, and and nobody's saying this is a problem. We need to put them on on a, on a terror watch list. We need to make these groups terrorists. No, they're too worried about. Oh no, Antifa, people who don't like fascists, they might knock some of these Nazis out that are shooting people up, and we don't want that because these are good white people. It's really crazy. This, this this whole, it's always been like that. That's what this country is. Doesn't matter Democrat or Republican. It's a white supremacist nation. Doesn't even matter the color of the politicians in office. They support white supremacy. Well, I mean, you don't get booked into the main event unless you've been cleared by the powers that be. So, yeah, definitely. Yeah. I look at all these people. Oh, we have a black woman as a judge. It's going to be so great of Supreme Court justice. She's going to support white supremacy, just like all the other ones. It's just an update. You know, it's this glacial fucking evolution. It's like, okay, uh, we can allow one voice out of nine to be from somebody like that. That's and they think that's yep. giving something up. <laughs> I was watching this dude. I can't remember his name. He ran for political office somewhere. He's a preacher. He's a black dude. And he's giving this rant about how we need to go back to how it was in 1776 and make this a nation of God. God. <laughs> and and um, I'm looking at him. I'm like, 
this dude's black and he wants this country to go back to the values it had in 1776. Where does he think that's going to place him? <laughs> like, it's just, it's just like, what's wrong with you? Does, like, but how did he come to the conclusion that that's what he wants? Because he's special I go, and it won't apply to him. Oh, yes, it will. Oh, I know it as will. As soon as he's but... not needed, though, those those conservative Christians are going to drop him like the plague. Well, we don't have to go back to 1776 for that to be how it is. I mean, if yeah. if he fucks up his welcome with his gig now, he'll be out, no problem. So, you know, I mean, no, I, I understand it. Of course it applies to him, but in his mind, it doesn't. Willie D said something once talking about uh, some, some. I think it was Candace Owens or something. He says, "What are you doing?" He says, "The whites ain't never gonna love you, and the blacks no longer trust you." <laughs> he says, where, "Where are you gonna go from here? Like, what's your what's your what's your next game plan? Like, where you have nowhere left to go? You know what I mean?" Uh, you just keep selling your soul bit by bit. That's it. That's it. And, and you know that's that's a whole new excursion, all new. But then I guess yeah. we should actually get to the shit we had on the list. Yeah. Well, here's the thing: you guys have these Nazi truckers in Canada. It's like we they they tried to copy them here, but you don't have they they they're not like mass shooting people, at least. <laughs> Well, it, no, they still did. They did that wasn't that just fizzled out, right? Didn't even become anything. No, this time the cops actually policed the city for the benefit of the people who fucking live there. They actually did their job, and yeah, basically nothing happened. They didn't let them set up shit. Uh, they proved themselves to be idiots with their smaller numbers because. There was no uh, no majority of suckers and hangers on this time, you know. No bouncy castles, no DJs, none of this fucking shit. I mean, now finally, like these guys are so outraged that Canada is a communist state now. All we did is close the street directly in front of our parliament buildings, just like DC has all over the fucking place. That's it. That's all that happened. And there's a very strict no parking, you don't live here, fuck off. That was it. And that's all it took. That's all it took. That's all it took. Wow. And the, the biggest event was in the Bytown Market, which is just going east from Parliament Hill. You go past the Chateau Laurier, and then there's the Rideau Canal, and then that's a byward market. It's like started out as 150 years ago, kind of the mining commerce part of town. So that's that district. And there was two idiots in a camper that had a loaded handgun. And that's it. In Ottawa, that's, you know, that's Ottawa. That's the way it always is. So, yeah, they didn't accomplish anything. They embarrassed themselves. Uh, there was uh, stuff that got live streamed, of course, that if anybody was involved in the public relations for these people, you would never want that to be live streamed. Like uh, one of their big organizers was trying to tell a bunch of them not to start going against the cops because they turned on the cops. You know, you know, yeah. it's the same old story, right? I mean, as long as you don't do anything to the cops and they're on your side, shit's good. But a couple of them actually tried to toughen the cops up, shall we say? And it didn't go over. And all it takes is for the next shift... You know, so those fuckers actually yeah. turned on us out there today. Oh, okay. And then that was that. Like, it was amazing. It was yeah. it was like a completely different police force 
than it was in the winter. Like they were just like, fuck off. This isn't happening. There's two ways to do this. Turn around. They probably got a lot of, you know. They got a lot of media backlash publicly, and it was international, so I'm sure they felt the need to step it up. But see, here in the United States, they don't do that. They will always defend and protect the Nazis no matter what. Nazi go shoot up a store in Buffalo, kill 10 black people. You know what happens? Patriot Front marches through Boston, and the police escort them and make sure they're safe and protect them while attacking the people they're coming to attack. So it kind of works out. I was disappointed, though. I seen one video of these Nazis. They were retreating, I guess, from anti-fascists. They were going to their little U-Hauls to get no, to crowd into the back. And they got into a scuffle. They, they, they started fighting with these anti-fascist dudes. And then some dude who appeared to be with the anti-fascists walked over and spread his arms out in between both groups, allowing all the Nazis to get into the truck safely. Like, don't, don't, don't do anything. Don't do anything. And I'm like, these cats are getting into a truck. You could disable the truck and they're stuck there. You know what I mean? You could, you could just, someone could just walk by and unload a couple of clips into the back of the truck before the door shuts. You could, you could have them trapped. You have a tactical advantage, but you're going to let them get in this truck and drive away. And this dude blocking off all the people from fighting so they could get in and go away. That bothered me. It was like. Why are you allowing them to escape? Keep some of them. Make make sure some of them don't ever leave where they are right there. That's the last place they ever was breathing. I don't know. But these are like literal Nazis. And now you got protesters. I mean, it was another it was another thing where people were protesting and some cats were smashing windows and writing graffiti and everyone started screaming at them. And yeah, I just keep seeing more and more of this, these these liberal fascists. Screaming about, no, don't tear up a street sign. Don't do this and that. Kicking them out. One dude was like, you're not an ally. And kicked this dude out for ripping a street sign, a parking sign off this, out of the street. I mean, I'm all for the St. Paul principles, but it's got to work both ways. Well, see. You know, if you're, if you're marching down the street, keep moving. Let them cats do what they want to do. Yeah, exactly. Nobody's bothering you. Exactly. See, this is a big problem with people who aren't fascists because you look at the people who will turn out for Trump there's all kinds of whack job groups but they will all put it away for the few hours they're together to support their demagogue and then they all go their separate fucking ways this, this yeah, but they don't have people they don't have anyone screaming don't be violent against them they're cool with the violence no it's not just that it's it's the principle of it it's these people on the left think that they all have to be the fucking same you have to believe this list of things what are you against who gives a shit what you're for tell me what you're against you know they're just going about it the wrong way in my opinion but whatever yeah, but the point is the cops here, no matter what, will always, always, always love, respect, and protect the white supremacists, whatever group, but it's the Klan, the NSM, the QAnons, the MAGAs, just random old Nazis, just these white lives matter assholes now, they will always protect them, even though it means brutalizing hundreds of people to protect 10 or 20, they could just say leave. I mean, I have you seen my old videos? They cleared the whole street, yeah, and and told and told like three thousand people to march the other way, and they complied. Idiots, but yeah, so the Nazis can march down the street without being obstructed by a bunch of people that don't like them. But see, there you go, they complied. Well, yeah, but a lot of us didn't. We were still out there. That's why I filmed the Nazis when they came, and you know what happened? The horses came, started stomping at people, yeah. swinging batons. The, 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 the cops is ready to brutalize us because we wouldn't move out the way for the Nazis. Yeah, but, you know, it's just stupid. that's the thing. If there was 5,000 that didn't comply, it changes things. Yeah, well, it was, the, it was this group. They had, like, celebrities and stuff. So the cops was like, could you guys please, I know you have a permit. First of all, I don't have a permit when you protest. That's a parade. And like, but we just like to change the route so we don't have any problems. 
and we're screaming, no, 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 no. And you know what they did? The quote unquote leaders were like, yeah, they turned all their trucks around, all their cars and started going the other way. As soon as they cleared it out, the Nazis, the cops was like, come on. And they all started marching down the street all proud. Like, yeah, we did this. I mean, I've seen cops escort Nazis to their cars inside of police parking lots that taxpayers pay for. They let all the Nazis park in the police lot so they could get away safely, blocked off the whole freeway so no one could follow them or chase them. I mean, I've seen it all, man. And that, I was talking to somebody about, about when I got my ribs broken. The Nazis were leaving. The cops could have just said, okay, they're on their way to their cars. But no, they want to run people over motorcycles and beat me with batons till my ribs is cracked because I'm trying to arrest some Nazis. It's over. They're leaving. Let us do whatever we're going to do on the side street over there. I don't need your protection. Obviously, they did. Yeah. You know? That's I, it. I just wanted to go deal with them. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I they pulled guns on us. And what do the police do? If you don't want guns pulled on you, you shouldn't be here, should you? Not, never, like, even checking to see if their guns was legit or whatever. No. Nothing. The Nazis was cool. Yeah. They've got them. It's okay. <laughs> I'm just saying, and my whole life, that's all I've ever seen is cops and Klan, hand in hand, literally. Cops will do anything to protect these people. Um, and, and, and you can look online, it's the same thing. Anywhere there's fascists, the cops will protect them. And they don't stop mass shootings. They don't stop crime. They show up afterwards and file a report. They can't even get the guy when he's running away from shooting a bunch of people. They can't even surround the area. People knew where he was. They were saying he's on the roof. You know what I mean? Yeah, well, I mean... People knew what he looked like. This is another thing. I mean, this is... I can't believe the the huge, obvious, complete fucking failures of police all over the United States. It used to be like one out of every, you know... If you looked at them, one out of maybe every five or six, it was a really big police fuck-up that made the death count higher. Now it's like almost every one. You know? They just, they don't do anything. They don't react. They fuck shit up. It's just ridiculous. Yeah. So I... Well, this brings us to another... Go ahead. No, 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 no. Good segue. I was no, I was, it's it's not even a segue. It's still related. This brings us to the Akron pigs. They shot a dude, Jalen Walker. I don't know if you saw the video. It's pretty horrific. Yep. They hit him sixty times after shooting ninety rounds at him. And when the people were protesting, the pigs were doing the usual, laughing at him and mocking him and attacking him. So you have a you have. A bunch of pigs jump out of cars, chase a dude that's running, and he turns around to see if the cops are still coming, and they just drill him. They just unload and unload and unload and unload. That that didn't stop. They're shooting his body into the ground. You know what I mean? He's on the ground, and they just keep unloading. Yep. Yeah, and then they have the guts to put out a statement that says they tried uh, life-saving after he there's was no way cuffed. there's no way there's no way you must they were shooting into him in the he was on the ground dead and they were shooting at him there were 13 were rounds shooting. there were 13 rounds in his head so what are you going to save yeah there's nothing to say they're full of crap exactly yeah and then they, and then they cuffed him yep and so so this is going on in, in Texas, and the Uvalde police, the Uvalde police, you know what they're doing? They're stalking and harassing the mother that went in to save her own children because they're saying she's making the whole police department look bad on a, in, in a, on a national level. Yeah, and? <laughs> I'm just saying these police are spending tax dollars to stalk and harass this woman for P because she's giving them bad PR. Yep. That's right. Yeah, no, no, but 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 here's the thing. So, the Akron police pull over some black dude and then chase him down and murder him and say, "We found a gun. It was in the car." But we, yeah, we found a gun on him. It was in the car that he was running from. 
So how is he a threat? Because he was unarmed when they murdered him. Yeah. Who I you know isn't people who run in from somebody want to see how far they are. If these cats are about to attack him, he might need to switch your move. Of course he's going to turn around and look back. You know what I mean? Well, <laughs> it's just so ridiculous to even say that, that they found a gun in the car. Well, so what? Why don't you say, well, he had a gun at home. Who fucking cares? Is not in his hand. Because when the headlines come out and the police say, oh, yeah, he was, he, we found a gun at the scene. <laughs> they, that's what they say. That's how they phrase it. And then you got to read further and it's like, oh, it was in the car. Ridiculous. You know? So, so, yeah, then you got police saying that he shot first out of the car. That's why we started chasing him. Sure. Yeah. And then, and then you got police saying, I'm not sure if he shot out the car or what that was. <laughs> it's this whole thing, man. These cats are corrupt. They'll let a whole school full of children get shot up. They'll take, they'll, they'll, they'll come to a grocery store after a mass shooting and kindly cuff the white supremacists that did it. Um, They'll let a whole school of kids get shot up while they sit around and do nothing. They'll let a parade get shot up when the whole dang police force is there already. Can't stop or even catch the guy after the fact. Man, these pigs are, are outrageous. And they take up so much of these cities' budgets all over. In L.A., they take up over 50% of our budget. You know what we have? We have nine cop cars showing up for a houseless woman sitting on the corner because she stole something. You got helicopters driving around for no reason, just on everything, got a helicopter. Got to have the helicopters, got to have the helicopters. You have cops standing around armed, sometimes anywhere between two and 15, so the street cleaner people can spray down a street and steal people's property and stuff. It's just, it's overkill. They have to they have to justify these budgets so they just flood these cops in everywhere. Kinda sounds like a neighborhood in Baghdad to me. It's definitely like a third world country. They Fuck. just play it off as it's for, I mean in what third world country says we're a third world country? <laughs> it's not the kind of <laughs> advertising PR thing they want to do for tourists or anything. They want to be like, we're awesome. They don't be like, we suck. Yeah, it's not good for sales, no. Yeah, but you got cops going up and down by these encampments, up and down, up and down all day. Just like, why don't you go mess with the people in the houses that are doing crimes? They just, they just, they go around poor neighborhoods, like on the east side over there, there's cops up and down, up and down, up and down, up and down the streets. Then somebody gets shot and all of a sudden they can't solve it. Effective. And they pad the stats and pour even more money into it. Man. Awesome. They got well, all these cops all over the place and, and they're like, oh, we need more because crime is high. No, you're failing. Doesn't matter. Okay, let me say, if they had double the cops at this mass shooting, you think they might have stopped it or or, nope. or caught the guy? No, they had them all there already. This was already the double up from the double up of the double up. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? Well, it's holiday <laughs> pay. Fuck, everybody's going to turn out. Police didn't start taking over half the city's budget. They had to double up and double up and work for it and use all kinds of tactics and fear-mongering. And, and muscling politicians. It's, it's, um, and here we are militarized police that don't do nothing. Well, that can, that can even take us into, uh, the, as the world turns with the, uh, LA Sheriff Department. <laughs> oh, yeah. Filling a waiver was, uh, I don't know, when was it? Uh, let me see. Um, was it the last week of so, June? Oh, yeah. Oh, I, I should just read it. It says last Friday. <laughs> last Friday, Cowardly Los Angeles Sheriff Villanueva 
Alex Villanueva refused to show up for a hearing on his own deputy gangs. He's been calling it a witch hunt, a kangaroo court, and all kinds of other stuff. But yeah, he's he's not showing up. He doesn't care to discuss deputy gangs. He already explained they weren't gangs, they were cliques. Social, social clubs. Yeah, social clubs. <laughs> that you need a tattoo for. <laughs> yeah. You need to commit acts of violence and get tattoos for your social club. Yeah. But, but yeah, uh, this dude is, I mean, he's gone after people that are critical of him. He's, he's like a mob boss. So many people, that's how you, that's the only way to describe them is they're, they're just like, yep, mafia, like organized crime members. That's why last week, I believe I said they should bring the RICO Act on the LASD. Yes, Drop absolutely. the RICO hammer because they, you know, they're acting like a mafia and they have a bunch of little gangs within the big gang. Yeah. It's, it's. I mean, I would think that's what the RICO Act was created for, bringing down criminal organizations, racketeering, and you know. But they're like, oh, well, he's state funded and he's one of our people and this and that. So it's all it's all different. But yeah. No, the difference is, yes, it's a RICO corporation, but we're on the board of this one. So yeah. that's that's the way Sacramento looks at it, and it's probably the way LA looks at it too, right? So, but I mean, yeah, I know Villanueva. He reminds me too much of Arpaio from fucking Arizona. <clears throat> yeah, and his predecessor as well. So well, our, uh, well, see, here's the thing about Villanueva much like the black Republican preacher politician we were talking about earlier, he has the whole thing where I can't be a white supremacist. I'm Latino. Yeah. You, you know what I mean? And he does all these kind of these things for the Latino community shows up and, you know, so, cause I think the Democrats put Villanueva in office. Awesome. Yeah, I don't. He wasn't a Republican. He wasn't like this extreme at first. Well, he might have been, but he was playing it off. And then once Trump came in, he was like, "I see this works." That's why they call him the Trump of L.A. Oh yeah. But I hear Lee Baca's cells old cell is open. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is something I don't know. I was trying to find a um a mugshot of Lee Baca. I couldn't find one. I was really? searching, searching. That seems odd to me. Like, you think that would be popped up. Got all these pictures of the sheriff and, you know, so I'm looking sad. I just couldn't find one. Think Maybe it got it just scrubbed? Me. I don't know, but it just seems odd. Like, that should pop up. Because I, yes, I literally it typed in. It was, in a, it was on my phone. It's just the Google, the, the Google thing. I typed in Lee Baca mugshot. And all you get is sheriff pictures of him. Oh, yeah. That's, no, that's algorithm for sure, man. And I That's scrolled down, bad. down, down. I didn't find one. Yeah, I really wanted to find one. I was going to send it to Alex Villanueva on Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> well, just tell him so, about, about the new movie that's going to be coming out in a year or two. Baca to the Future. Baca to you. Starring Alex Villanueva. Yeah. Oh, man. <laughs> yeah, but that that's the thing. Yeah, that bothered me. That was scrubbed. Like I was wondering, like, how do they take that down? Anyway, let's get off that. It's just that I just want a picture. Now I want to. Now I want to get a picture and put it on shirts and posters and sell it. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm sure you'll get sued for copyright infringement then. The elusive. No, that's public information. The elusive Lee Baca mugshot collector's edition T-shirt. NFT. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, there you go. Oh, yeah. Make it an NFT, man. Good coin. Yeah. You could sell it to someone for like $2.4 million, and then they could sell it to someone for like 2400 <laughs> <laughs> Why not? Uh, I love to see NFTs crash. 
Yeah, I'm not finding any mugshot of Baca either, man. Yeah, you think there would be one? You think that'd be the first thing pop up when you type in Lee Baca, but it just it isn't. Yeah, I, you know, since we have like two point, no, twenty three billion listeners on this show, if somebody find a picture of Lee Baca mugshot, a real one, like send them to me, please. I would love to have that. <laughs> Yeah, it's, I don't know. Something doesn't seem right. I'm going to have to Photoshop and make my own. <laughs> oh, man. But, um. The best one yeah. I can find is a screen cap from ABC7 that says Baca begins three year sentence. And the picture of him is in his dress uniform. Yeah, he just looking kind of sad on that one. I saw that too. What a so, joke. So, yeah, you know, all these people, even up to the president on down, the people running for office in Los Angeles, people running for Congress, the most liberal Democrats running for office all over, all say the police need more funding. Crime is out of control. And, you know, that's that's got to be, that's we got to make that, uh, um, irrelevant. People got to see the police don't do shit. The police aren't stopping anything. You can have an entire police force at a parade and a mass shooter still going to shoot stuff up. Unfortunately, he didn't even hit one cop. But um, he's going to shoot stuff up and the cops are going to not even catch him. I can't you're remember. Gonna a, you're, you're, go ahead. I can't remember how long ago it is now. It may be like a decade ago. I remember when there was that shooting in Dallas where it was somebody who was actually trying to kill cops. And it was like, holy fuck, like that never happens. It's always where there are no cops. Well, now, see, it's there are cops all over the place where mass shootings happen now. It's, yeah, but... But that Normalized. was way bigger news. Yeah, that was then. that was way more important because they shot cops. A cop, like we said before, we we haven't discussed the number. You said as much as it benefits them financially, but how many civilians' life is one cop's life worth to them? At least twenty something. We know that much. Well, like I said, though, I still agree with what I said. It's it's about uh, an amount of money. And however yeah, many, say. however many people it takes to make that amount, could be one person, could be a couple hundred. Yeah. Yeah, that's why I said you were right about that. But it's just yeah. you really gotta, you gotta look at it, man. These cops get shot. They're crying, throwing parades at our tax dollars' expense. All the cops quit working, line up in the street, and start saluting a dead body. You know, it's just insane. A bunch of kids get shot up. They're like, let's let's attack the parents and stalk them for the next few months. They're making us look bad. You know, we don't need this. We don't need to be funding this with this much money. The amount of money we spend on police around the United States, we could end we could end homelessness. We could fix a whole bunch of streets. We could fix a lot of problems. We could feed children. We could do so much good with that money. We can get people mental health care or health care put people in you know homes we could we could cure a lot of people that that you know that are suffering because they just need medical care that they can't afford but now you're going to give it all to these bumbling fools that don't do anything except harass black people and murder black people all day and, and night and go Don't through the, all that money yeah brutalize poor people the more poor they are, the more they brutalize and tax and fine and patrol them, terrorize them. It, you know, it's 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 ridiculous. We don't need to be paying this much money for these police. That money could be better spent elsewhere. And I mean, then, you would yeah. think that you would think if you have police, what would they? What would what would what would be a reason that you'd want police to show up? And I bet you most people say, well, if there's a mass shooting somewhere and if they show up and don't do anything, what good are they? 
There's no difference if they're there or not. Well, I mean, yes, to all that. But I mean, the thing that is starting to really, unfortunately, starting to make me laugh is now it's just so blatantly of it's almost like these shootings are happening in spite of the police presence as if they're happening just to fucking pawn them you know i mean they're I mean, just it, so useless did you see the video and the pictures of the akron police department yep they they lit a blue line around the whole police station like christmas lights or something after you just murder a black person, you will put up a racist symbol, basically saying, we're not ever going to snitch on each other. We're not going to ever rat each other out. We're all in this for the blue and screw you. Blue Klux Klan all the way, baby. That doesn't even make sense. Like, they're just trolling people. And you got cops in windows laughing and mocking the people. Well, again, you know, I say it's not the easiest history to find but if you look hard enough you'll see lots of stories exactly like that from oh, yeah. the, from the green zone in baghdad from mogadishu from a few other places where americans should not fucking be anyway and and, and from the 40s 50s and 60s in this country and before yes that too. <laughs> but i mean this is your urban police force today they're the veterans from the u.s army who fucking did that shit. Oh, yeah. That's why earlier when you said people getting shot up, I said it's probably by the U.S. military. Man. Yeah, it's just, it's it's ridiculous. These cops are on the side of the racists. And then people be like, oh, but that cop's black or that cop's Mexican. So what? They're on the side of the racists. Clarence yeah. Tom. Clarence Thomas is black. That don't mean nothing. Obviously. A fascist is a fascist. You don't know what a fascist looks like. You just know when they're fascists. You know what um, they act like. Fascists. Yes. They act like fascists. They talk yes. like fascists. So yeah, real quick, since we, we brought up houselessness, the, the LA City Council just voted to make it illegal for any houseless people to live near any schools or daycare centers. So they're just making... Yeah, they just keep adding on more places people can't live until concentration camp time. Yeah, they're just removing more area. It's scary, and these people, man, these people go for it. Oh, of course they there do. Was, there was some awesome liberal woman on posting on um, Twitter saying that she believes everyone should have a place to live and this and that, but just not on the streets on her block. <laughs> Well, yeah. The whole thing. Yeah, call the police on these people. Don't allow them here and there. Well, yeah. I also yeah. saw another post by some other guy who said, my son pointed out there was some houses people that were moving on to our private private neighborhood. So I told him where they could stay in the backyard for safety of my house. So, I mean, yeah, there's some good people out there that are doing what they can, you know. That's okay. I but, bet the association will get together and try and get them kicked out of the neighborhood now. <laughs> yeah, possibly. Unless he owns the house, they can't do nothing, hopefully. But yes, I agree. It's good to see that. Good to know it still exists. But yeah, I mean, people like this councilwoman, they say that because that's what keeps them in their job. You know, I mean, you have to understand that, too. It doesn't matter. If she believes it, yeah, she's a piece of shit. If she doesn't believe it, she's a different type of piece of shit. Yeah. You know, it's 
it's it's a game. Well, it's a game that they play with people's lives because yes. a lot of people are dying on these streets, have been dying on these streets, and no one even should be ever living on these streets. They they could once again, you got these cops doing nothing. Yep. You're gonna send eight cops out with all these cars and a helicopter for one houseless person, unarmed, crying, doing nothing. You don't need that. Send no. two cops out or even one cop out and say, hey, but a cop without a gun, like, what do you need? Can I get maybe a cop with a whole bunch of supplies and a food truck? Could you imagine that? No, not there. Not in the U.S. And just drive up and be like, who needs something? I don't have a gun. They just call me a cop and I don't even like that. I'm just a food delivery person to help you all and give you services and food. And that's what they need. That woman didn't need guns aimed at her and cop cars blocking whole driveways and half the street off. None of that. Terrorizing all the people. People had to miss their bus. Next one don't come for an hour. It was ridiculous, man. All that because one woman said something to somebody. A NIMBY and wanted to call the police and say she threatened my life. Come on, man. So ridiculous. If you walk in by somebody, obviously they're mentally ill and they say something to you. They're not doing anything to you. You keep walking. What are you going to call the police for? Privilege. Man. Or just. Or maybe she said. I think, she was, I think she threatened to steal his dog and hurt him or something. I was like, whatever. But she didn't do it. Keep walking. Yeah. And, and well, this is a tall it. dude. She's a small woman. He could have just held her by the head. Like in the cartoons. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, well, then, I mean, that just proves that he's just being an asshole. That's all. Yeah. Well, anyway, though, it just it just doesn't make sense, man. We can have... We can have people helping people and getting people places to live and feeding people. I mean, there's houseless kids who now can't live around schools. And, you know, we could be feeding them and making sure they have a place to live. Especially since the Supreme Court's going to force everybody to have every kid. It's um, ridiculous. You won't even take care of them. You're going to force all this and that on people, but you won't take care of the people. You won't even give them health care. But they could live in a tent and they got to stay away from the school. It's stupid. Yeah, this is a third world country, Glenn. Masqueraded as the beacon of hope for the universe or whatever it is, right? The beacon of of, of truth and justice for all. The beacon well, of democracy. I, I think for the first time in a little while, it just generally seems to be less noise that I'm seeing coming from the U.S. this July 4th for a change. It's been a lot worse, to put it that way. It seems like there's just not as much interest these days. Oh, you're talking about celebration? Yeah. Well, I mean, they, they, they rolled back women's rights. They're about to take gay people's rights. They took the Fourth Amendment away. No more Miranda rights. Um, you could legally marry children <laughs> in, in Tennessee, but the child can't get an abortion once they're raped. It's it's going back to some biblical stuff, man. And that's what they want. It's really disgusting and scary. Oh, and and federal, I said they no more Fourth Amendment rights. Federal agents can come up at anywhere, anyone's house, anytime they want. No warrant needed. And I'm sure if you try to resist, they'll smoke you. Because they can. And you know what's going to happen. They don't need a warrant anymore. So what does that tell you? Once this becomes more of a thing, you're going to have people's enemies, the robbers, saying, oh, let's throw up some federal marshal gear on and run up in this drug spot and steal everything they got. Because they can't ask for a warrant. We're federal. We don't need one. You know what I mean? Sounds like Mexico. <laughs> yeah. I mean, so this is the people, thing. You have people you know? who are imposters and you'll have real feds and they'll all be robbing people and nobody knows who's who doing what's what. 
Yeah, that's Mexico. It's, yeah, I'm just saying it's a real slippery slope. Well, I mean, the CIA did have a big hand in creating that in places like Colombia and Ecuador. So maybe they're just bringing it home. I mean, they brought it home with the drug war and crack, I think. <laughs> they just, they're just expanding on what they brought home. It's, it's, a, it's a terrible time, man. It's always a terrible time in this country, though. Like, I can't remember a time people weren't fighting for rights. At least not when I was alive. And it, and since I've been alive, it's supposedly better because of the civil rights. Well, that... It's, see, it's getting yeah. back to bad. It's getting back to... to, to it seems to be headed that, back that way like a boomerang. But if that's but, better, I don't want to even know what worse is. And it's, it's getting worse now. No, but see, that's that's semantics, because when somebody says it's better, what's another definition for that? It's You could say it's not as bad as it was. Yeah. That's better, but it don't sound the fucking same. Yeah, that's true. And, and now it looks like it's going back. But like it's less horrifying than it used to be. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, off yeah. topic. Did you see? Did you see the awesome Freedom Fighter Revolutionary ALCs video? No, I didn't. She was walking, talking about she going to get her nails did, and um, she likes red or something. But anyway, so she's going to do this, and she said it's about empowering myself and self care because that's that's an act of resistance. Okay. So basically, she said, to all you people getting your nails done, to all you people doing all the little shopping and stuff you're doing, you're a revolutionary and you're doing acts of resistance, little mini acts of resistance by buying your coffee and getting your nails done and getting your haircuts and send me $15 because <laughs> you're just like me. We're all fighters. Yeah, it's just such a scam, dude. These people are out of touch with reality. Somebody put something once that had a, a face warp kind of thing with her and Pelosi, and it said Ao Salosi. That was hilarious. Okay, now I'm gonna take on the the public relations professional role for a minute here, and I completely understand what you said about her video, but it also tells me that you're not a woman. <laughs> And that's who it's made for. Because there is a very big opportunity for her to gain some core support because of Roe v. Wade. Yeah. And because there is a vacuum of other people that fit her configuration to take this role on. Somebody uh -huh. has to replace Hillary as a symbol, as somebody who barks out the talking points because Pelosi is just not adequate at it. They need somebody new. She's training. That's what's going on. I think she's awesome at it. She gets these people all riled up like I'm on your side. We're going to fight for justice and we're going to fight all this injustice going on and we're going to be together in this. And then she goes right on with the Democrats and does what she's going to do while she's talking all that good. It's like Bernie Sanders all over. Again. Exactly. It's the Bernie model. But she can become an internal Bernie. I mean, that was the thing about Sanders. It, the bottom line is he's never been a fucking Democrat. He is a Democrat of convenience. So AOC is the 2.0. <laughs> I want to play the $6 million uh, man theme song. Built it better, <laughs> faster, stronger. <laughs> oh, man. And I imagine this video was made, what, in her, in her no. district? I don't know, it was just an Instagram live kind of thing where she's walking or TikTok or whatever, where she got her phone and she's talking into it. 
Yeah. Well, probably. If she's going to get her nails done, it's probably, you know, somewhere in the neighborhood. Her district is Brooklyn, isn't it? I somewhere think so, in Brooklyn? Yeah. Somewhere yeah, in Brooklyn? Like Brooklyn? Brooklyn or maybe the Bronx, sorry. New Yorkers don't want to sound stupid. Sorry. You're One Canadian. or the other. She's on the east side of the river somewhere, I think. You're Canadian, so you know more about the U.S. than most U.S. people. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I guess. That's true. I'd be curious to know how many Americans actually could name the five boroughs in New York City. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I can. <laughs> yeah, I don't know if I could. But anyway, the um, yeah, the 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 um, average person from outside of the U.S. seems to know more about the U.S. than the people that live here, which is always crazy to me. Priorities. <sighs> so, I bet yeah. that I bet there's a lot of people that live in the Vatican that have no idea how to give an address or describe where anything is either. So, you know, same type of mindset. <laughs> it's done intentionally. <laughs> Keep them stupid. Oh, man. Yeah, it's, it's getting really bad here, man. And the way they're setting it up is going to get worse real fast. I, I was going to take it as some kind of flashpoint. I don't think people realize that. No, neither do I. And like, you know, I mean, with, with, again, you know, like I said, the shit that the Supreme Court is deciding because they feel like it. This isn't from a case before them that they're coming up with these new decisions. They've decided to do this on their own. So you want to talk about kangaroo courts or political courts, there's, this is it. I mean, I mean there, there was no mystery. Then we knew that certain people were put there to do certain specific things, and they're doing their pain. They're 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 doing everything they're supposed to be doing the way they're supposed to be doing it. That's why they were put there to do what they're doing. Yeah, I guess that just the way it's beginning and the speed and the weight of it is a little much. You know, I mean, you don't know you're fucked till you're fucked. So yeah, just run it through, run it through, run it through, shove it all through, get it all done as fast as possible. And then, you know, you can, you can find ways to grasp power and hold on to it. Or if you are a complete fucking believer and not, not bar, the mission is accomplished. So it doesn't matter. If you're a true believer, the mission isn't accomplished until the earth is no longer existing. It's a death cult, man. That's that's the truth. Well, yeah, rapture and all that shit. Yeah, but but I mean, you know, this is the thing. It's this is about the one document that people on every fucking millimeter of the spectrum in the United States has always bitched about the precious Constitution. Well, it doesn't matter anymore. The Bill of Rights, it doesn't matter. So, you know, for people to just not do much, I don't know, man. Seems rather I mean, could, surprising. Could, people better understand how serious this is. But what can the people do? They're not going to vote it out. That's what they think is going to happen. Well, you can do stuff like a general strike. You can do stuff like oh, starting yeah, yeah. to damage the people who are inflicting this yeah you got i don't know it's got to get to a point because you still got like you've seen these people don't don't you dare hurt the city's property don't <laughs> yell at police like that don't attack the nazis you're just as bad as them don't don't you know don't do this don't do that what will happen if we all stopped working we shut down freeways Yep. They might attack us. So what? We outnumber them. They can't get us all. Doesn't mean we're going back it. to work. Fuck. No. Like, do you want to make things better for everybody in now and the future? Or do you just want to keep suffering and letting more people suffer more every generation? Because that's what the past people see, seem to do, a lot of them. 
and keeping your head above water. Yeah. And they, they wiped out they, they they wiped out separation of church and state. I didn't even mention that. Yeah. And you know it's not, I mean, you said this last week, but but it needs to be reiterated. It's gonna get tested at first. There's gonna be people praying to deities that the Christians don't like. Yep. And they're going to alter it somehow and make sure it's just about them. Yep. They're gonna say they're gonna say, oh, this is a Christian nation, you can only do this or that. Yep. And it'll go to a state supreme court and they'll say, Fuck you. Jeebus all the way. It'll try hey, no. to be appealed to the Supreme Court and they'll say, No, we're not giving leave to that. It's done. And that's that. Yeah, I po I posted this um I posted this thing earlier. Hang on, let me see if I can find it on my Twitter. Oh shoot, how do I find my Twitter? You know, and people talk about Iran, Iran, yeah. Iran. Well, you know how the court system works in Iran? Exactly like that. Yeah, look at this. All the district courts make some crazy rulings. People are like, that's ridiculous. Let's take it upstairs. Upstairs is like, no, forget it. Too bad. It's done. It's not that the court system in Iran makes so many crazy rulings. They just refuse to hear any lower rulings. It's just like the branch offices are in control, man. And that's that what the dangerous. U and that's what the U.S. is going to be with this de-evolution of federal oversight. You know, you can say whatever you want about a federal government, but in a country like the United States, no federal government is Balkan City. <laughs> it's not going to end well. It's not going to end well at all. They did a lot. These these Christian groups did a lot to get us here, though. They worked hard. Well, yeah. I posted this, I posted this earlier. Since They're 1970. Down. Since 1977, there have been eight murders, 17 attempted murders, 42 bombings, 186 arsons targeted at abortion clinics and providers across the United States. In small cases, a small in some cases, a small group of clinics have been targeted multiple times. One of them has been bombed and lit on fire nonstop, pretty much from 1984 to 2012. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, so terrorism works, yo. If you want to get something changed, evidently, follow suit, right? It always has. That's the problem. It always has. Yeah. Because you can't fight a violent, you know, a violent enemy with peace, with peaceful protests. It just doesn't work. They or just something. Laugh at you. Or something that is actually from the streets up. If I mean, they have, imagine, if you know, if they if they're serious and they have adequate arms, you can't beat them. Why not? Well, ask the U.S. Army. Oh, you mean that you can't? Yeah, you can't beat the people because the yeah. people are fighting for their stuff. Yeah. And the people still could have cover unless you're just going to slaughter everybody. You know what I mean? Yeah, people that's not... in with people. Yeah, I mean, that's not a good PR story, that one. So, But it's the reality. If you have an army coming after you, you have to, and you're fighting for the freedom of the people, you got to be with the people and blend in. It's just the way it is. Yeah, but I'm saying that, uh, you know, the, the clear house method is just, it's not sellable. So, oh yeah, that's, a, that's the last resort. And they can that do was, it on small scales. They just can't do it on big scales. Well, still, even Fallujah, they thought they could get away with that, and they didn't. Yeah. So you know, but hey, who knows? Every day is a new adventure in the United States of America. Baka to the future. I'm seeing reports that Jalen Walker's gun didn't appear to be fired. 
Well, like I said, then it's as relevant as he had a gun at home. It's fucking useless. Yeah. It doesn't matter whatsoever. I mean, it doesn't matter anyway because he he was fleeing. You know what I'm saying? His back yeah. was turned. But um, yeah, it's just they said they that was the cop's whole thing. Well, he shot at the cop or something. He shot. We he shot a shot off. So yeah, I don't even think that was true. I mean, it's legal to have a gun there. <laughs> but he's black. Yeah, like Philando Castillo. Yep. Hit a legal gun, legal permit, everything. everything. Told the cop, and the cop flips out and shoots him, just murders him right there. Black guy, gun, legal? No way. Yeah. Oops. <sighs> yeah, it's it's crazy. It's really crazy. Yeah, but the NRA isn't here to help black people bear arms. In fact, historically, they've been against that. So everyone knows already. Uh Wow. Is this? No. Is that it? Did we cover the list? There's some Nazi in North Carolina with like what appears to be Confederate flags and American flags all over his car at a Roe vs. Wade protest threatening people. <laughs> Not a surprise. Wow. I think it's in North Carolina. One hour ago. Yeah, this is crazy, man. This is crazy. These people are, are, are starting to get really bold. You can attribute that to Trump, actually. Um, he he got him bold, spreading the... Because he, he was out there spreading this white supremacist, racist rhetoric on a huge scale and had fans coming out and cheering him on with these Klan rally things he had. So, yeah, that fired these fools all up. And it's not going to stop for a while now. No, this was, you know, like there's a lot of people that say there's a whole generation of so-called seasoned protesters that came out of Occupy. Well, there's a whole generation now of seasoned fascists that have come from the last five years in U.S. politics. And there's been no shortage of people, of young white men to recruit. And, th- yeah, they ain't going away, you know. And they're, pr- they're going to keep growing for a while. It's just how much stimulus do they get. And for right now, it's as much as they can handle. And it ain't getting smaller. And unless there's some sort of real kickback... It ain't going to slow down because, you know, a place like Idaho has traditionally been known as neo-Nazi, white supremacy. It's a definite part of Idaho. And since that arrest in Coeur d'Alene with those 31 idiots in that U-Haul, there's been absolutely no news of anything going on in Idaho or eastern Washington state. So... You know, they went to Boston. Of, well, I mean, there's a certain amount of LARPing going on out there. And as long as these guys think they're cool and they're going to get away with it, they're a lot more willing to try it out. But if they start to figure it out that they're going to end up with a record or they could go to fucking jail, nah, it's going to change things. I don't know, man. They're going to, I just have a feeling it's going to end bad. They're going to go and do some terrible stuff. They're gonna uh, they're gonna succeed eventually if they keep trying. It seems what they're doing all the same kind of get the U-Haul truck, load a bunch of Nazis into it. Yeah, but violate it's... violate our own rights by wearing masks. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, but the thing is, it's it's not about some rando. If anything, there's gonna be a real fucking psycho. 
that gets in that truck with 29 other guys. You know, so I mean, the, the guys who are seriously bent, they're going to find a place. You know, I mean, it's just because suddenly they're not in a popular group. They're not going to do what they're going to do. No, that don't mean shit to them. I'm just so. saying you got you got these cats mobilizing. Oh yeah. They I mean they dress alike. It's it, it's like the KKK, you know what I mean? Any Nazi group, they always dress alike. They uh, that's their that's always their goal is to but but I mean I'm telling you, you know for sure some of these groups got cops in it. Oh yeah. Military, ex military, whatever. I'm just saying it can be really dangerous if they get to the point where they're gonna do something, things heat up a certain way. And it's going to be like some mass murder Kyle Rittenhouse thing, and they're going to claim self-defense. And they might get off. And that's what they wanted all along. They go instigate, 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 until someone reacts. And now it's, you know, boom, we're, we're already ready for this. Surprise, yeah. surprise. We're going to mow everybody down, and now we're going to go and cry victim and this and that. That's what they do. That's what he did. He didn't need to be there. He didn't need to be there instigating. Yep. It's 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 dangerous, man. These people need to be stopped before they're started, and the police ain't going to do it. The government ain't going to do it. It's up to the people to do it. When you see a U-Haul full of Nazis, and they're all getting in the back, retreating, don't emo demobilize the vehicle. Don't let them leave. Trap them there. Shut the door and lock it. Well, that's sure as fuck what they would do if it was the other them, way around. Let them sit in the hot sun the next day sitting in the back of that U-Haul for a week. Who cares? Or just light it up. Target practice with them inside while it's locked. I don't know. Do something. But don't let them leave. When a Nazi gets to leave safely and doesn't even, even catch a real ass whooping and they're, you know, no, you know, they're able to get away, they're going to come back. That's going to be validation for them. I could do this better next time. Yeah, exactly. I, I learned they're, something today. They're not going to respect their opponents. That's something that has to be understood. If you let a, a Nazi get away where he should have got an ass whooping, he's going to think you're a pussy. It doesn't matter. They're going to come back and they're going to oh, do something yeah. bad, worse but each time. But they're not. It might not be, be there. It might be somewhere else. But they're gonna. You're letting them go. Hurt more people. No, but I mean, what I'm saying is, if you catch the opposition, and there are weapons involved in the skirmish, you better fucking injure them. You can't just let them go because that's not the message you want to send. Then they ain't gonna no. be scared of yet. No, get you, kill them. Kill them if you can. Don't injure them. You can't do nothing. <laughs> yeah, a dead Nazi can't harm anybody. They're the ones choosing this path they're, they're led down. They're the ones that want to follow it as racist, separate, separated, restrictive, fascist ideology. They're the ones cheering on people losing their rights. And they always have been. It's no different now. They were attacking people for mixed race marriages. They were attacking black people for drinking out the wrong fountain. They were attacking immigrants. The whole entire history of this country. They came in and attacked the indigenous people and they started attacking anyone else trying to come in. They're terrible. White supremacy is terrible, man. At least to nothing good. You can't let it breathe. You can't let it, it thrive. You have to stop it any which way possible. It's the problem. It's the problem with everything. The resurgence of race-based society has to be stopped. This resurgence cannot continue. It's never went away. It just got louder. That's what I it's mean. Just like, it's just like they turn the volume down from 10 to a 7, and now it's going back up to a 9 or 8. You know what I mean? Or a 12. They're looking for a 12. This is what got, can't happen. 
<laughs> you got the spinal tab volumes. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> See, we don't we don't have to worry about that because we got eleven. Yeah. Yeah, it definitely was eleven. But it's not going it's not going past that again. I hope it doesn't. Well it can't. I hope it can't. Not. It can't. That's the thing. It can't. Yeah, I don't know. People need to make up their minds what they want to do. You want to, you know, keep um, policing protests and thanking cops and soldiers for everything and holding up picket signs, or do you want to shut shit down and get some real change for the people now and the future generations to come? Because I ain't taking you seriously when you're out there with picket signs talking about peaceful protests. No. They're mocking you. They're like, that's what we want. That's exactly what we want. We want them just to go get it all out of their system. And in a few weeks, they'll be on to the next thing. And when another big one comes, it'll be just like this all over again. Some might yep. be a little worse. Some might be a little this and that. But they're never going to shut stuff down because they got stuff to do. <laughs> They got shit to buy. Yeah. Yeah. So I don't know, man. I mean, when you shut everything down, people just go into grocery stores and get what they want and pass it out. It's like not really that hard. Nobody's moving. You just get what's around you. Plan ahead. Bring bring some lunches and stuff. Everyone starts sharing. I mean. If they make you stay out there long enough, you might have community gardens in the middle of the 110 freeway. <laughs> yeah, but, you know, again, you have to remember, the U.S. Army has experience with these types of tactics. So, you know, it's... People better be prepared. No, but, I mean, this happened in places where the U.S. Army occupied as well. You know, yeah, but where they, every, well, everybody would just fucking stay home. I guess the president could sign an executive order, put the army on U.S., let them attack us here. But they're not, what, are they going to kill everybody? We'll kill as many as we have to. Whatever. They're not going to be too funded when nobody's making no money. Well, yeah, that's obviously the priority. But, I mean, you know, it's, it's just like the slogan. Until morale improves, the beatings will continue. So Yeah, the people here outnumber the U.S. Army. We all sitting up, locking stuff down. And I'm sure some of them would join the people. Most of them are fascist Nazis, so they probably wouldn't. But a few of but, them would. Well, I think that's the bigger problem right now. How many... Uh, Army National Guard units or whatever would just turn into their little Confederate army. They already have these little militias and stuff with all these cops and and and, and veterans and all that. But whatever. Yeah. But the thing is, every state's National Guard has access to a lot of good weapons. That's true. So. So, they come out know. with M16s and shotguns. Oh, they can do better than that too if they want to. I mean, yeah. You know, I'm I'd be curious to know if a state like oh, I know they do. Texas in the Air National Guard, they have A10s. So, in a worst case scenario, <laughs> they can take out neighborhoods with relative precision. Whatever. And when you check out a neighborhood and you take out a freeway infrastructure, it's still shut down. Oh, yeah. People just died for the cause, but you're not getting it back that quick. So what? We still win. The more stuff they destroy, we're winning. That's how you have to look at it at that point. You got to you gotta use their stuff against them, I guess. And get and get help from people that have been doing this a long time around the world, you know? Like, send us some advice. That'd be funny to see Cuban mercenaries <laughs> working against the U.S. government on U.S. soil. 
Yeah, but I'm saying there's people who've been fighting this like this around the world for decades upon decades. Those people give you advice. You, you know, you can you can you can learn quick in a dire situation. Oh yeah. And there's some cats around here that just used to shooting guns off and gunfights all day. So field experience. Yeah. I'm telling you, there's cats that's on our side that were in the military and are in the military. Yep. Just not the majority. But yeah, it's harder to send soldiers that are United States soldiers in to kill people that are just like them. You know what I mean? Yep. Are they all going to be willing to do it? No. Well, most of them, yes. Probably. So, yeah, I mean, it, you, you're going to have some kind of advantages, small ones, but you can you use them. I don't know. It is what it is, and when it happens, it's going to be different than anyone imagined. So let's just shut stuff down and then figure out the rest afterwards. <laughs> I, well, I mean, you got to do it. You know, I just don't expect much to really change in the big picture because I think that's – what the system is after. So, you know, they have all the levers of control. So I think something pretty big would have to fuck up yeah. for them to go off script, you know? And I mean, it doesn't even matter what it's about anymore. Just two completely different realities of everything get started and they both exist, you know? So, yeah. Ah, I don't know. It's like now I'm seeing all these people bitching about the Democrats spending all this money on Ukraine, all this money for weapons for Ukraine. I've been bitching about that since day one. But the reality is the money's not going to Ukraine. It's going to the same old crowd of military contractors oh, who, yeah. have, who have new orders. That's it. Well, the weapons go to Ukraine. The money goes yeah. to the contractors. Yeah. That's, exactly. That's... So, whoop de do. There's nothing different. It's just we're putting a bow on them and we're not going to use them. That's it. So, this is just a way for them to justify a whole other wave of large, large combat systems to pump up their stocks and make them rich and in debt governments around the world to them. So, you know, yeah, it's a win-win win. it's a win-win-win for the military industrial complex, but you could yeah. go with that conspiracy theory or you could go with the fact that two CIA agents made a bet and one said <laughs> you'll never get the Democrats to support Nazis and he <laughs> like, want a <to> bet. <laughs> You're on. <laughs> Challenge accepted. Yeah. <laughs> so I don't know. We got anything else? Or are we going to wrap it up? That's nothing else on the list, as far as I know. Yeah. Oh, I think we we're going to shame people who celebrated the 4th of July, but yeah, shame on y'all. Um, read Frederick Douglass's speech What is July yeah. 4th to the slave? Don't let a July 4th go by where you don't read that. Um, or you can probably find it on a, um, on YouTube, somebody else reading it or whatever, or online somewhere. But yeah, Frederick Douglass, July 4th speech. Read it, take it in, and live by it. Uh, anything else, Glenn? No. Fuck no. America. There you go. I concur. So, yeah, we're out. <laughs> Thank you, everybody listening now and who will listen. And if um, you're still here by this time, subscribe to the YouTube Saga so live stream again. And we're out. Almost.